another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes, his name is Bricky, and that other person's name will be addressed soon. But before that, if you enjoyed today's episode of the podcast and maybe you want to consider supporting us, head over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where you can get access to the Discord, bloopers if they happen. The $15 tier list gets you access to all of our posters in crispy digital HD format. Ooh, it's so good. Patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. And golly, these last few months sure have been cold. Hey, Bricky, is there a place where one could, oh, I don't know, get a sweatshirt and or sweatpants that are just really stylish and keep you nice and warm in these cold winter months? It's so hilarious that you said that, because it was like 80 degrees yesterday for us. Yeah, uh, I mean, but it's still. You know. But still. Hey, if you want to get some wonderful merchandising, 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 you can go down to Orchid8.com, <laughs> link in the description, and get yourself some fantastic hoodies, sweatpants, and if you want to feel like that, hey, you know, some dice, perhaps, or a little game mat, or something of that nature to really tie you over. Perhaps even a hat, because hats are cool. Check it out, Orchid8.com, link in the description. And we're reading War Boss for the book club, so make sure you read War Boss for the book club. Wah. Merchandising, merchandising, merchandising. Spaceballs the <laughs> flamethrower. As taglines go, it's not bad. It's pretty strong. I could see that. Well, I mean, who's that? that Bricky, who's that? I moved my I moved my roadcaster so I was I can't hit the soundboard as e- easily as I could before. <laughs> oh nice. Good, 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 good. I lied to you. I lied to you out of I, I lied out of my goddamn teeth, DK. I would never move my soundboard too far away. I would never. <laughs> hey Kiriath, how's it going? Hello. <laughs> I I feel like this is just I as chaotic as I thought it might be. <laughs> yeah, oh, on, I you can't say you hate it here now. You've been no, you, you're locked in. You're locked in at this stage. There's oh no yeah, for it. sure. I yeah. This is this is this is my life and this is my home. <laughs> You've passed <laughs> over the event horizon of the black hole, and you're just being drawn in no matter what you do. <laughs> ah, event horizon. That's that movie based on 40k. A. Eh? Hey, wow. How did that's, you know? Wow. Yeah. What that's, a segue. Yeah. Wait, what do you mean, what a segue? Wait, yeah, what? I I'm just, you know, I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, are we doing... Maybe you've are we doing a Horizon episode? Mo- are we doing 40k adjacent movies? No, we're not. Oh, well, you said segue <laughs> normally means it has something to do with the previous statement. Yeah, oh, that no, was I a just, Dean I just, Kamen. I just really wanted to see whether that was an exciting proposition or not. But now we know we can do it in the future. There we go. That's, that's, yeah, that's 40K adjacent movies that are kind of in the universe of 40K but aren't? That'd be a great episode. Well, we'll, we'll do that next time then. <laughs> yeah. Made, oh, no, I've said that out loud. Okay, no, don't hold me to that. All right, Shai's yeah, ye- hey, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Tell Shai's him, yelling Bricky. at Tell us. Him. Yeah, Tell Shai, him, Bricky. Tell Shai him. Shai is yelling at us, so, you know, I I guess we have to... <laughs> We have to change our discussions. <laughs> I guess we have to do work now. How long until how long until Shy regrets this whole setup? How long? I just, she already has. Already happened. It's, yeah, it's already we're, done. We're past yep. that point. Okay. Yep, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, 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 yeah. Yep. We're already here. Um, yep. a big announcement for all of our our fans and viewers. We have decided for the brand new beautiful year of 2024 that uh, Kirioth will be joining us on a semi permanent basis. Hey, let's go! Hey, oh, the yeah. thumbnail! Let's oh, go! Wait, Kiriath, why are you so big? Damn, you're Jack, dude. I'm uh, just well, a little guy, and it's loosely based off real life. But what you do is you take all the mass from the kind of chest up and move it slightly lower, and that's <laughs> that's like that's how it's kind of been <laughs> interpreted. Uh, that are, are might you... actually be my canonical height next to Bricky, though. Uh, how tall are you, Kyria? Five eleven. Yeah. You know what? You know what? I'm uh, honestly, I, I appreciate the honesty, man. You could have said six foot in, easily, but you you gave <laughs> us the you gave us there, the five eleven, and I'm I'm really I, I really appreciate that. I I can't uh, for ages. I thought it was six, and then and then we measured, and it's literally like five eleven and a half. But you know what? Five, eleven and a half. It's not six, so I'm not going to say six because it's not true. 
You've got to be honest about these things. I'm just surprised mm-hmm. you didn't hit us with a centimeters uh, number. I don't know that. That requires conversion work that I'm not prepared to put in. Don't you live in the, the UK? Yeah, but everyone does feet for, for height, right? Really? I think so. Dude. In the UK? Wait, really? I, th- I, th- I think. Is that, is ah, that whatever? Is that why they have, is that why we measure in inches in 40K despite this being a British game? I mean, quite yes. possibly, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's an absolute mess over here. Just whatever uh, number you fancy at the time tends to be what, what you go for. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> well, no, well, never mind. Anyway, I see we, I see we have a, an Iron Warrior Warpsmith uh, look going on here. <laughs> so it's good stuff. We need a little bit of, a little bit of chaos up in here. I mean, yeah, it's yeah, got to be yeah, something, yeah. you know, tech, tech related, hasn't it? It's got to be something vehicle based. Otherwise, you know, why am I even here? <laughs> so, Bricky, you said you said you said Kiriath is is joining us on a, on a yes, yes, yes. Of course, uh, every at the end of every month, the last episode of each month, it will be a Kiriath episode. So uh, you're going to get him a total of twelve whole times this year. And uh, which actually sounds like not a whole lot, if I'm being honest, but um, <laughs> yeah, it really doesn't. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, he'll be joining us for the end of every single month and uh, not just about vehicles, but just to do a nice fun group thing and uh, also give me a week off and uh, give DK half a week off. Yeah. Yeah. Because I get so tired of listening to Bricky. It's just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah he gets it. He gets <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm just anyway. going to make everything easier. That's not that's not true. That's not how that's going to work at all. But, you know. <laughs> I, I think nice, you should try to get quotes that Bricky can't figure out. Ooh, that's a good idea. Well, I mean. Because I'm not going to get it no matter what. Like, that's easy. You need to get one that Bricky can't get. I'm kind of hoping that I'm, I don't know. I don't, I, this one might, it might be like starting out strong in that regard. Because Ooh, you have, you have a quote? Ooh. I do have a quote. It's, oh! it's, a cut, it's, a, it's a cut down quote, because if I did the whole thing, I mean, it, it's it's like the better part of, like, a third of a page. So we're not going to do the whole the whole lot, but I feel like, I feel like this, this is like a nice, it, it could, it could do the trick straight off the bat, or um, I'm just going to be proved a liar and Bricky's going to get it immediately. We'll see. We'll I was see there when Horus okay. slew the Emperor. I hope it's that close. <laughs> Imagine if that was the first one. I think I'm going to get him with this and then go straight into that. Uh, ama- well, uh, not amazing, terrible. So, shall I give you Shall I give you the quote for this, Please. Yes. For this episode? Yes. A conflict the likes of which has not been seen since the Monkai warred amongst themselves and their corpse of a seer fell to his traitorous son is coming and all my steps lead towards it, no matter that I walk other paths. I see the stars stained red with the blood of the Monkai, and though their wars do not concern me, and I would gladly let them destroy one another, I know that to avoid this fight is to condemn my race to inevitable doom, and though all I see is darkness, I know that I will not flinch from my destiny. So this is some Eldari shit. So is, I, is this your brain talking about the Inari? That's kind of... You're, or, on, you're on the right track, but in the wrong time period but it's also the correct oh. time period so it's not so it's not Yvrain or the Yanari but it's hmm well I, th- it I is thought Eldar based right I, yeah, I it, thought e- even I got that it was the Eldar talking yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah. the human conflict because it's star stained red the monk yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 so what about hmm does, I can't it, help you here, Bricky. This is all you, man. <laughs> well, I'm thinking like you, you said. Well, it said the this this was spoken as in it's past the Horus Heresy, right? This is after. It is, yeah, after the Horus Heresy, right? And so it's like, hey, I want you to like. I, I guess I, I want to figure out who the who the the speaker is. Is it is it I Prince can, Uriel or? It is not. I can give you. I can give you a little. They are yeah, the. Yeah. Uh, give, give me a little poke. It's a, it's a farseer. Oh, it's Eldred. It is, yeah. Okay. Uh, So he's got binoculars. (laughs) (laughs) I love that meme so much. (laughs) It's such a good one. Um, It is. Uh, I I don't I don't know what they're referring to. I'm assuming I saw that maybe it was like the the overarching massive chaos thing and and stuff. But like I don't know. 
I don't, I don't know what they're specifically referring to unless they're just referring like the Tyranids or something. This is admittedly a bit of a curveball because it is something that technically you have already covered because <gasps> you've already done an episode on the 13th Black Crusade and the fall of Cadia. Oh, I thought I recognized that that phrase. Yeah, because Eldrad and the and the um uh don't tell me uh, Ulfway took part in this. He did, but you covered the 2017 version of what happened on the 13th Black Crusade, which is not the original story for it. We're going to talk today about the 2003 version and the corresponding Eye of Codex. Uh, Eye of Terror Codex that came along with it. Ooh, <laughs> really? Where okay. The, it's it's kind of, it's really cool. It's one of those things where Games Workshop took uh, an established event and then massively changed it. They did a whole lot of retconning in order to make way for um, Robot Girly Man coming back, the <laughs> Primaris showing up, Cadia being destroyed by Abaddon the Despoiler, but that was all built off something that happened way back in 2003 when Games Workshop held a global event where you could log your games and it would have an impact on the Warhammer 40k universe as a whole. Huh. Okay, interesting. So in the 13th Black Crusade that you guys have already covered, there is a big, long list of all the people involved. You've got, like, St. Celestine, you've got Greyfax showing up, Belisarius Call was introduced. The 2003 version has a much shorter roster, and so many big things that happened in the kind of retcon version just didn't occur when the 13th Black Crusade was originally was originally done. So if I just read the defending commanders for the original 13th Black Crusade, you've got Creed, you've got Lord Marshal Attica of the Imperial Guard, you've got Great Wolf Logan Grimnar, you have Iron Father Cardan of the Iron Hands, Eldrad Ulthran, and you have Phoenix Lord Morgan Ra. That's oh, it. Oh, what a cool dude, that Morgan Ra. It's is, so short compared to the newer one, where you've well, got you've got yeah, like that's, Sven that, Wait, that's it? Oh yeah, the notable characters for the uh, for the original were really quite quite a small group of people. There weren't that many. Um, oh wow! And yeah, because the new like, one is like Smash Brothers. They're all here. Yeah, yeah. It's like a it's like a who's who of interesting and important people. Um, yeah, and there are there are things like the. We have the the uh, like intervention of Trays in the Un- the Infinite in mm-hmm. uh, in the newer version. That was not a thing in the two thousand and three thirteenth Black Crusade because there was no Trays in the Infinite in the Necron Codex that had come out one year previous. So a character like very instrumental in just the understanding of things like the Black Pylons didn't actually exist at the time. Huh. Well, this so, is... so did did you say it was like based on like people logging their games and stuff, and like yes, that had the direct impact on who the important people in this thing were. So there was like a bunch of uh, kind of pre-existing conditions and events that would happen, but Games Workshop basically published a map of the Eye of Terror of the Cadian system and the systems surrounding it, and said, okay. We have different forces. We've got the forces of order and the forces of disorder. So for the forces of disorder, you've got Chaos Space Marines, Necrons, Orcs, Dark Eldar, Tyranids, and the Lost and the Damned, a faction which technically no longer exists. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, we've then, talked about the Lost and the Damned before. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're so good. Uh, the Ghost Riders. Yeah. The forces of order, Space Marines, Imperial Guard, Tau, Eldar, Sisters of Battle, Demon Hunters, Crute Mercenaries, Space Wolves, 13th Company, Ulthway Strike Force, and Cadian Defense Force. So the idea was that you played games of Warhammer 40,000, you sent the results of those games to Games Workshop, and they tallied those up against different systems and worked out who had the most influence, and then that would decide what happened to that system. It was awesome, and also... 
the, the number that I've seen thrown around the most when when kind of going back to this because I I vaguely remember this because of starting sort of in third and like remembering the Necron Codex coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> the number that I've seen thrown around the most in terms of how many people participated in this, given that this was eleven, like, sorry, twenty one years ago, in two thousand and three, over forty thousand people took part. Whoa. in logging results which for the time like when you consider i mean it's not like warhammer was not as popular then as it is now not by a long shot yeah. and to have that many people participating like that that long ago is it's crazy i think in since february of 2022 to now there's been like i think it's about 20,000 people who have taken part in different like ITC um, tournaments and stuff, so playing 40k competitively. Yeah. Having like twice that number way back in 2003 is, is, it's pretty significant. It's pretty impressive. And Games Workshop allowing the fan base to kind of sort of dictate where the story went was like, they'd done it before. They'd done a few worldwide campaigns before, but they'd always been very limited. They did one for Armageddon, for instance. Um, but for something this big for Cadia, like the fate of Cadia to be decided by games logged by the players online was, was pretty massive. Not to, not to mention there's a a couple funky things. Like it's 2003. So the ability to like, I don't know, make a bot to make sure Cadia doesn't die. is not really a thing. (laughs) It's Um, true. And also, it's, it's a really interesting thing about old school Warhammer too, because new school Warhammer, one of the biggest um, complaints to it is that it's it's too competitive uh, and it's not as uh, fluffy as it used to be. Um, I think those people have pretty rose tinted glasses as they they forget about arguing about an armor facing for an hour. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But but that being said. Um, there is, uh, back in the day, the games where I argue superbly more unbalanced, but dice also mattered like three times more. So you could absolutely trounce a good army just because the dude rolled like three too many ones. And so (laughs) it it, it was really, really fascinating, the differences. And, uh, and it's funny to, um, to, to, to think about like how much more, I guess, important or, uh. Or, or how much more affecting old school 40k was. Yeah, it was yeah. overall way more swingy, like way more swingy, and not necessarily in a kind of, oh, this person's got a really overpowered army. It's like, well, yeah, but also you could just accidentally trash people without really meaning to, just because of how, I don't know, I, I, I found dice. that, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had a not good build for my Iron Warriors army in third edition, and it still did pretty well on quite a few occasions, not because of how good I was or because of how good the army was, because it wasn't. It's but because just, you loaded your dice. <laughs> I just had lead plating on one side of the dice, yeah, and that exactly. did all the work. Is um, that why you were in my bathroom for so long? <laughs> it was, yeah, it was lead poisoning. I was just slowly losing my mind, and I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> oh, I thought you were trying to flush the dice. <laughs> <laughs> no, only only an absolute nab tries to flush the lead dice, because they just sit in the bottom of the bowl, and you can't... I, I can't mean, imagine that one. I can't imagine no, anyone has ever picture. done that. I mean... No oh, way. So good. That'd, be, that'd be crazy. <laughs> that'd be nuts. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, it's so good. I love that picture. It makes me laugh every time. So, yeah, the the kind of original 13th Black Crusade was a global campaign where players decided the fate of Cadia, and it was massive. It wasn't just Warhammer 40k, though, because Battlefleet Gothic was still a thing at the time. So you had Warhammer 40k doing the battles on the ground, and then you had Battlefleet Gothic deciding who had control of airspace. So you had these two different games, like, kind of affecting the overall story, the overall lore of the game. There was also there was also mention that I found a couple of points of Inquisitor being involved as well, but I didn't really find very much about that at all. By that point, I think Inquisitor had kind of fallen by the wayside quite a lot, and you can actually go onto the uh, the Eye of Terror website sort of kind of 
you have to do it via Wayback Machine, which I'll, I'll I'll link you. It's a little bit it's a bit ropey, as you'd expect, um, given that I think most of it was done through Flash. So it's it's not just like old for old for now. The thing that it needed to function properly no longer exists, which makes it a little bit tricky. But you had this massive campaign. You had Codex Eye of Terror that was supporting it, which I still think is one of the best codexes that Games Workshop ever made. Mostly because they added some really, really fun stuff into the game. It was then sadly taken away really quickly (laughs) because as soon as the edition changed, it was like, all of this is gone. Good luck. Sorry about that. But there's a few... There's a few gems in there that I absolutely love. Like, you're a fellow lover of the Imperial Guard, Ricky. You, you, you what? know the one no, who I mean, the guard. on occasion. I, I mean, if you, if you gotta put it that <laughs> way. If you want to phrase it like that. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I, that was my my silly little giggle because I'm a silly <laughs> little guy. Yeah, it was never, it was a- never again. <laughs> It was an experience. Maybe not one to be repeated, but it was an experience. Um, <laughs> so, um, something that you could take was the Cadian Defense Force, which had a bunch of additional rules, which I do have right here. Um, and uh, one of my favorite bits from that whole thing, just from the just from the whole thing, was the inclusion of youth platoons. So oh, you could have no. youth army platoons for the oh, Imperial Guard. You were able to canonically run child soldiers. Let's go. Oh, you my God. absolutely were. The yes. Children yearn for the comp from the mines. They yearn oh, for combat. Geez. Yep. There is All a right. quote in here which I love to this day. <coughs> Any Cadian who can't field strip his own Laz gun by age 10 was born on the wrong planet. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, I think they actually Absolutely still use that brutal. quote. I, I think I remember specifically stating that because there was like a, a line or for, for Cadians where it's like, you will learn to strip your last gun by 10. You will be doing artillery drills by 12, like, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It really kind of hammers home just how, I mean, just what an absolute hellhole Cadian yeah. it, it yeah. was, is. Um, the fact that that is just. It's just a commonly accepted phrase. So one of the things that this book allowed you to do was to field youth army platoons. So a youth army platoon consists of two to five squads of cadets. The whole platoon functions as a single unit, which means that you will have a single unit from 20 to 50 models, which is amazing. And the best thing is you go for that full 50 model unit size, you're looking at... 200 points which oh. is mad <laughs> and great at the same time wait 200 points of 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 well for 50 so well, are we yeah, still play, are we, 50 are we still playing in the 1500 or the 2000 points cost so at this point it, i believe it was 1850 was the most commonly accepted which i mean why um but <laughs> yeah it it 50 guardsmen <laughs> effectively so Jeez. you i mean you could just flood you could flood with basically children <laughs> you're basically just throwing oh, wave upon wave man. of youth army children platoons soldiers. of people if you want oh, geez. At, at least until the most recent codexes they did have conscripts as a as a a unit and some yeah. people would bring like 300 models to a to a game but even that i think is a low amount compared to this it's, this is it's like also the it's also the phrasing like just youth army just doesn't sound yeah it doesn't sound no, great that does doesn't, it no that does not sound Ten like a thing youth, that should exist youth army cadets Woo-hoo. <laughs> oh, oh, oh don't but don't forget though uh, a missile launcher is another 20 points uh, that's so, true. Yeah, you don't. So, you don't have to. You don't have to pay for it. You can't. So just throw when it little out there. when little Timmy pulls out the gat, <laughs> um, <laughs> you got to make sure you're paying Jeez. for it. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Child soldier with their rocket launcher. Oh boy. All right. okay. <laughs> it's so good. I lo- in in a in a wow. This is awful. Sort of way. I absolutely love it. So this is one of the, the things. Grim that- darkness. 
Yeah. It's one of the things that I think made that the kind of that campaign, the uh, Eye of Terror campaign and that 13th Black Company so fun and interesting and very different to the 2017 version was the fact you had this supporting codex that you could use to field armies that then appeared in that campaign, like the 13th Company for the Space Wolves, um, which was the first introduction of the Wolfen. So we got the Wolfen. Again, is that the supposed second to time be a good, a good thing? I, I was going to say, so that's who we blame for the Wolfen. Okay. To be fair, I, I feel like the original Wolfen models, so the the newer ones, I mean, I'm not a particularly big fan of the newer ones, but that's because I had an army of the old ones. Well, not of, but I had a bunch uh, in yeah, my the old 13th ones company aren't army. So bad, actually. They're just like space marines that are kind of werewolfy. Yeah, the new ones are definitely. It's it's weird. The new ones look really goofy and weird, and like I yeah, I kind of prefer the old ones. The old ones are I I I just think they're like classic. They're like classic models. I really yeah. really like them. And the 13th company of the Space Wolves. They had they've like they did their own box for them, which was really fun. Which was a mix of a Space Wolves box and a Chaos Space Marines box because they'd been in the Eye of Terror. They'd been hunting traitors yeah. since the time of the Heresy. So when you bought a box of Thirteenth Company Space Wolves, you got a fifty-fifty split of Space Wolves stuff and Chaos Space Marines stuff. So you had that like. All the kit bashing stuff was just in the box as one big thing. That's pretty cool, actually. The only downside was uh, no vehicles. No vehicles for the 13th Company because they couldn't maintain them. So the Space Wolves 13th Company army had just a blanket ban on transport and on vehicles apart from bikes. You could take bikes, but that was it. So as an army, it was... It was not the easiest to play. I did have a 13th Company army, and it was interesting <laughs> because it was like, okay, where's all your, where's your heavy armor? How'd you get in there? Well, uh, you sort of, you really, you kind of don't in a way because none of that is allowed. <laughs> You're not allowed any of that stuff. Really, really pared down army list. Like, I know that when it comes to Space Marines just as a whole these days, codexes are quite like, especially Space Marine stuff, quite bloated, right? There's a lot going on. There's a lot of models. There's a lot of data sheets. D- DK, but- don't don't say a word. What? I wasn't going to say anything. You so were. I, I, I heard it. I Why heard was it, it from what, what a- was I? What was I going to say, Bricky? No, really? Space Marines bloated? <laughs> ah, never. I could, I could feel it. <laughs> Coming from you. I, I, I don't know it. what you're talking about. It was Ricky. the most DK thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> sir. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I still got you to say it though. Like Yeah, you're well, I it was it was clear. Thank you very much. <laughs> that, I, I do find it very humorous that the 13th company because they were just they just flat out aren't like they're wolfing, they can't <laughs> maintain vehicles. That is yeah. pretty great. I mean, canonically, uh, also, Wolfen we, should not be able to maintain vehicles. That's fair. Can we can we appreciate the fact that uh, there's someone in that second photo as Wolfen just grabbing a chaos like cultist <laughs> just and just him. just throwing him? <laughs> it's like he might be about to bane backbreak him. I was about to say that it's like he takes after his Primark very well. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right over the knee, break his it's- back and make him humble. So good. So good in peace, art. A lot of the art from those codexes is just so, so cool. So actually, that's Shy is correct. We should probably talk a little bit about the main difference with the kind of with the two thirteenth Black Crusades is the end more than anything else. So obviously there's a much reduced kind of roster of characters for the one that took place in 2003. Um like Belisaria's call didn't exist. You didn't mm-hmm. have Celestine showing up. Um, Phoenix Lord Morgan Ra showed up and did way more than any. So I don't think he was really mentioned all that much in the like retcon version. Um, I don't remember him showing up all that much, but he fought alongside Creed in defense of a planet 
in the in the original. Um, but through this campaign and through the way that they took all of these different reports of Battlefleet Gothic games and Warhammer Forty K games, initially it looked kind of bad. The forces of disorder basically piled all of their effort into trying to take a single planet, and it didn't work. Because the way the system worked oh. meant that you were supposed to kind of assault different places and attempt to overthrow general control, and it was all done through percentages and stuff. So it was less like, okay, if you just keep throwing guys at this one planet, then you will win. That wasn't how they actually did it. They did like a, a percentage system. So depending on how many games you won would affect the percentage of Imperial control. And if you managed to erode it away completely, then either the Force of Disorder would take that planet or, in a couple of cases, Games Workshop would then decide, okay, well, the Imperium would not stand losing this planet and therefore they would be forced to use Exterminatus and just get rid of it. Mm-hmm. So... After the first week, it was looking kind of ropey straight away. And then, because at this point, you had... I mean, there's a bunch of forums now, but there were quite a few larger forums going on. The Disorder players, and Chaos in particular, really got themselves very well organized. (laughs) To the extent where there were two groups, the Triad and the Planet Killers. And through those two groups they started to not just push back against Imperial control, but just take system after system and start really hammering away to the extent where it became a thing of, oh, well, you know, the Imperium as a whole was still more popular back then, just like it is now. Mm -hmm. Is this going to end up being a wash where nothing really happens to, oh, disorder and chaos are actively just making massive inroads towards Cadia and are having a really big impact on the setting at this stage. To the point where Mm -hmm. it came down to Cadia itself and instead of what we've had happen in 2017 where, you know, the the fall of Cadia, the planet broke before the guard did, we lost... The Eye of um, Terror opens up and Cicatrix Maledictum and... Huge rift across the galaxy, just bad news for absolutely everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, It was a lot less dramatic in a way because at the end of the 13th black crusade technically chaos had done quite a bit of damage on cadia but cadia was not destroyed and whilst they kind of had control over the planet's surface they did not have control over the airspace because the ground battles went the way of the forces of disorder but the space battles played through battlefleet gothic went the way of the imperium so you had this massive stalemate where all of this campaign had gone on and at the end of it Cadia wasn't secure but it also hadn't fallen it wasn't out of commission and no reinforcements could come to help chaos because the imperium had won the space side of the battle and had effectively cut off the planet from being reinforced by the enemy they so chaos would eventually little, lose a little switcheroo yep it's it's such a different like ending to what Games Workshop then changed it to. Um, Wait, so that, also- that that's how it ends back then? Is just like yeah, chaos took Cadia, but eventually they're gonna get starved of whatever because they can't get any reinforcements. Yeah, they basically ended it on that stalemate, and that stalemate wow. lasted from 2003 until 2017, where they did the Gathering Storm stuff, and introduced you know way more characters had some really big kind of events when it came to like character deaths and stuff for instance in the first 13th black crusade um <coughs> creed funnily enough was not stolen by Trazin because he wasn't a thing <laughs> yeah because Trazin didn't exist yet so yeah. he couldn't be put in the gallery his best friend also uh color sergeant kel was still alive at the end of it uh, uh i remember when you could run kel i remember when you could run creed <laughs> He was he was still going. He was still he was wounded but alive. Um quite a big thing and that something I remember people being slightly unhappy about was uh Eldrad as well. Eldrad did not have a great time at the end of the original 13th Black Crusade because Eldrad managed to make it onto the Blackstone Fortress that Abaddon had 
brought he- to the Cadian system. He wanted to try and like connect with it and to like uncorrupt it, only to find that when he got into the Blackstone Fortress's sentience, he found an extension of Slanesh. Ooh. Who killed him. Oh! Just wiped him out. Now, he'd kind of, not like eh, stopped it from being a permanent thing, because for a long time it was a case of, you know, people didn't know what had happened to him. He might be able to come back. He might be trapped somewhere, because he'd put a lot of his soul and kind of mind into a bunch of waystones and things. So it was kind of a, oh, he's been taken out, but is it the end for him? We're not sure. Right. But, I, I thought when he found Slanesh and got killed by Slanesh, his soul took the big oofy for the Eldar and, you know. The big was, oofy, huh? The big Yeah. Oofy. I mean, the, there's no bigger oofy for an Eldar than to get killed and sucked up by Slanesh, right? Like to have their I, well, okay. soul just <laughs> right through that, a straw, you know? I guess that's true, but it's, I, don't, I feel like, okay, it, it's it's the... It's, it's the, the biggest oofy for an Eldar. I think death is a big oofy for many people, yeah. Well, yeah, but if their soul is still in a soul stone, they can potentially eventually do some magic the, nonsense. And, you know, it's it's 40k. Death is never the end. DK, let me make this clear. You just because you are right. It's not about you being wrong or right. It's about your phrasing. <laughs> it's about the big oofy. Uh, well, it is. Like, uh-oh, I'm, I got eaten. My soul got eaten and I'm going to be tortured for all of eternity. Oh, whoopsie. You use it with the same gusto as knocking down a cup of coffee. <laughs> Shai said, uh oh, my soul got eaten by God of Sadism. It's a bit of an oofy. Not a bit of one. It is a big oofy, I say. The biggest. You know, that's a big big oofy. I have a video for this. Uh oh. Whatever it is, Shai don't believe. I nearly died just there. I I just (laughs) took a sip of water as you said it, and it went straight into the lungs, and now I'm in real trouble. Oh no! Oh We've ended carry out before it even began. <laughs> it's not going to be twelve episodes. It's just I, the one, and the, then that's, this, this that's is, a bit of an oofy. This really, is the Kira vibe is. I'm getting right here. This is this is the vibe I'm getting from the <laughs> that big one. Oofy. I love that one. I, 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 that that is that is a great one. I see that as a as a Raiders and Devils and Canadians fan. I see that gif on the regular. <laughs> In replies, so well, yeah, I, I I don't even have to play it. I know exactly what it is. Well, yeah, I, I have. Saw, I, been I a, saw the title and went, I know what that is. I, I immediately remember this. <laughs> I have been a very big fan of the Chiefs. You know, oh, go to hell. <laughs> Sorry, that go was a bit of an oofy. My apologies. To hell, that bit was a, a big oofy. I was even, I did, even I did a big oofy. Oh, the oh, thing oh, is, oh, you. Oh. you you like obviously Raiders hate the Chiefs, but literally everybody outside of Kansas City hates you now too. I don't even understand football. Eh, well, whatever. <laughs> what like 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 what, when's the part when they go down on each other? Like how many how many downs does it does it reach first? Oh, you just, you get you get four downs. Four to go downs. 10 yards. Yeah, I should learn. You didn't know football. there were four downs per pl- per really? You didn't know there were four downs? I, I know there's. four. Bricky, that's still, a bit of a Are we still speaking movie, English? Dude. What happened? Did I black out? Uh, so, Kyrgios, no, no, what Kyrgios, are we doing you, next here? What are Kyrgios, we? Uh... You speak English. We speak American. So, <laughs> yeah, so Eldrad enough. got a bit of an oofy. Not the biggest one because you he didn't get his soul that, sucked up. But oh, you could no. say that he had a predicament. I think yeah. that's. A, I think you can. I think you can put it that way. He had a definite predicament. Um, yes. <laughs> I don't even. I can't even pass that sentence that shy just put in there so gonna... okay shy one of those was fruit and and she does not count in that category definitely not definitely that, that not. is not fair two of them yes well at least at least one of them yeah zen and matara are definitely in that category for sure not fruit fruit is pretty wholesome that's you know well until she started screaming like <laughs> for the emperor <laughs> shit during dark time <laughs> All right, Kiriath, let me let me let me ask you. <laughs> let's uh, let's let's reel this thing back in, shall we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Kiriath, you you a fan of fishing? What yeah. the hell? Yeah, a bit. Uh, All right, the, cool. The then you should be then you should thing? be yeah. you should be good at knowing how to reel. Let's go. <laughs> I don't. I just don't know how to recover from just reading that All sentence. Right. It's still. <laughs> 
breaking. So Eldred, my brain. Eldred got dunked on by Slanesh, eh? Yes. <laughs> so effectively, Eldred goes in to try and to try and help. <laughs> he does try and help, and it it just doesn't it just doesn't go very well. He is pretty much kind of dead for the next fourteen years of real time. I'm not entirely sure how much Games Workshop did to change that law wise. Or whether it was just a case of, ah, you're playing him from a different time, which they do like to do. You know, there's there's plenty of characters in codexes and stuff that are like, well, technically this person's gone, but um But the the whole <laughs> I mean, yeah, to be fair, it did it did feel harsh at the time, and that was that was the that was the main thing that I distinctly remember one person at my local gaming store getting very upset about, because it was that thing of Two unrelated factions have a fight, and then as a result, your like one of your main characters <laughs> gets wiped out. Which oh yeah, that would be pretty brutal as an Eldar fan, wouldn't it? Or as an Eldar player, yeah. Kind of harsh. Tau, really yeah. kind of harsh. That's brutal. Um, Tau and the, the orcs are having a giant fight, and then a railgun shot goes into deep space and just kills Gilliman in the head. <laughs> just takes his head off. Yeah, he just takes him out at random. It's like, he just why? happens to be be waiting for a ship repair, and, this, and the, feet, the void shields are down. And because, yeah. as us Mass Effect fans know, and I've, um, uh, <laughs> what is it, like... The, the the two cadets they're yelling at was like when you fire this weapon it, it might go off into deep space and hit someone else in ten thousand years. <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's uh yeah. Man, I hope when that new Mass Effect game comes out, it doesn't suck. Same. Whenever it comes out. Anyway, that uh, does kind of suck. But Eldred's still around though. So <clears throat> yeah, yeah, and like he he's kind of managed to maintain being quite a major character despite what happened. You know. <laughs> 20 21 years ago um but the the major like the major differences i mean say the major differences it was like the status quo for like we said like 14 years where games workshop had this stalemate where they did what at the time felt like a very big move like having the 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 fan base actually make a proper impact on the universe and then having done it they were like, and that's how it is. No, don't talk to me again. Don't ask me. Don't ask about how <laughs> about what we're doing next. This is how things are, and we're just going to we're just going to leave it like that, and that'll be fine. Um, and they there was never also, did like, it again. <laughs> pretty kind of, yeah. I mean, I think they've done you know they've done other other like story based things, and then we had the. I think the most recent thing was having. Space Marines and Tyranids fight over, like, from the contents of the Leviathan box to mm -hmm. work out whose reveals got showed off, you know, sooner after that box dropped. Yeah, um, and the Nids won because I think people were pretty, uh, pretty Space Marine burnt for a bit. Yeah. Although, I gotta be honest, that's like kind of a cool thing that would, like, I mean, I know you probably couldn't do it now because, like Bricky said, like bots and stuff, but like, I don't know, the idea that like you could directly impact the lore of 40k by playing the tabletop is kind of a neat idea. Like, yeah. I it would it would probably get a lot more people playing the tabletop if they're like, oh shoot, I can I can make my faction relevant just by winning enough. And you know, that's kind of cool, but you know, logistically it probably doesn't work out so great. Things were also a little different back in the day. The game was different. The the, yeah. the yeah. systems yeah. were different. It it was you weren't playing 40k for the game. You were playing it because you wanted to make a narrative. Uh, I remember you know, a, yeah. a, a that's, lot of my that's the other thing. Being able to like control the narrative a little bit is kind of dope. Yeah, yeah. some of my friend. I remember I had a friend who has this like Space Marine captain, and his base has uh has the head of every everyone he ever beat. So, um, so like eventually, That's awesome. yeah, so eventually he had this like space ring capture this power weapon, whatever, and it's this old like metal, whatever the hell it's from way back in the day. Um, and then he just basically, uh, it has like a helmet of a blood angel down the bottom and then like an orc head and then like a Tau head and so on and so forth. But now he can't run it because the base is so big because he had a key because he's had this for like 20 years. 
Um, <laughs> racked he, up a couple kills, yeah. Yeah, so sorry, buddy, but that's no longer a 40 millimeter base. You can't run that in a tournament. <laughs> he's like magnetize the guy and then just have the display base every time he takes it anywhere. It's like his display base and he takes it off, puts it on a normal base. Anyone he kills, he adds to the display base and it just gets bigger and bigger. And no, no one cared at the time, but he's on like a mountain of skulls. I should, I should, that, he probably awesome. he probably that. spent more money on kit bashing parts than he did on the actual model. It, it I was, mean, that's the way, surely. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, this is, that is the way. Is that just me? That's what I tend to do. Um, I actually did that with a with a, a chaos knight when I had a I had a game against someone who I think it was a bloodthirster. Well, chaos knight, you've rinsed. got a lot more area, right? Well, that I gave them part of the model because. That one oh. bloodthirster killed three of my chaos knights, and I wow. was like, "You know what? That was insane." Here you go, and I took the shoulder pad off the chaos knight that I'd kit bashed to have a warhound titan uh, Vulcan mega bolter, and gave it to him. And the next time I saw him, he had it on the base with the bloodhound like standing on it, which was quality. I love that. Hell yeah! Um, I just stuff like that. Just building up the characters is just a really fun way to do it, and it feels like. Yeah. I mean, this is probably like a bit of like rose tinted glasses way of looking at things, but it, very kind of prevalent way back. Mm-hmm. Sure. There was a lot of like narrative decisions made over anything else, which I don't know. I it's one of the most fun things about the game, isn't it? it yeah, yeah, finding finding the right uh, the right balance between the two is important. Playing the game yeah. itself is so is really really fun and. It's fine if you're going to do it in a more like traditional game sense that involves strategy and build list and list building and that kind of stuff. But at the same time, you do want to try to stick around with the the, the enjoyability that comes from the fact that you are doing a narrative war game. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, it, it's so, it's a good time. Something that I wanted to uh, I wanted to um, I meant to mention this earlier, but then I got distracted, which happens frequently whenever we do these so mm. this campaign when i when i said that like you know it's over forty thousand players sent in a bunch of results i did manage to find a site i thought i'd lost where there is a direct rip of the um white dwarf article that andy chambers wrote after the campaign had finished so there's loads of really really good information in it um i will <coughs> link it um and just the top paragraph says so much so andy chambers wrote the biggest campaign in games workshop history is drawn to a close over forty thousand players have sent in more than a quarter of a million game results over <laughs> eight weeks to decide the fate of the cadian gate it's worth pointing out that when they decided to do this campaign they thought and they have outright said and i think it was andy chambers who actually said like Oh, we're expecting like the Armageddon campaign, like plus fifty percent. We've had more results posted in a single day than in the <laughs> entire Armageddon campaign, Jeez. and we thought that was big. Hell yeah! <laughs> wow, it's, 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 kind, of, it's kind of wholesome. It's kind of wholesome how it really how is, yeah. yeah how much of a group effort this kind of thing was, and and it it just isn't really a thing you probably could do now. Oh, yeah. the logistics like Shai like said, now. you'd have to have like some big tournament that was overseen by like GW staff, and it'd have to be very stringent and strict, and it wouldn't be like as sort of, you know, yeah. It, it, by today's standards, you just couldn't really do the same. Oh thing. shit! Oh, yeah. watch out! Oh, it's the monolith with the steel chair. Watch out! Watch out! <laughs> <laughs> my but God, he's got a family. That I, that's that's the best. That's the best. I don't think DK knows about that, but it's all right. I know no, you I do, Kirioth. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, just in terms of like the overall approach and the what this is the thing that I I wanted to like for us to talk about was because it was so so weird and interesting when Games Workshop did like the Thirteenth Black Crusade and Gathering Storm and the return of Primarchs and. I saw people getting super excited that oh Wolfen have got models and stuff, and there was there was me and you know obviously quite a few other people. It's not like I'm the only one who remembers this, but a good number of us kind of sat there going, "Oh, this feels weirdly familiar and totally different at the same time." Like we've we've all we've not just had this, but 
contributed to it directly the first time round, and that just became the status quo. That was just how 40k was for, you know, well over a decade. And now the like the events of the 13th Black Crusade are massive because they've changed 40k in huge like irrevocable ways. Oh, like yeah. As a direct kind of consequence of all of that, we have Gilliman back, we have we have Primaris, like so much stuff happened because I mean, of Games Workshop retconning what was at the time one of the biggest kind of events in 40k and it's just become like a springboard like a jumping off point for so much story development which is like the total opposite of what actually happened where it the things occurred and then nothing changed for 14 <laughs> years it's wild how different the two kind of versions are i was going to say how was it like it- for someone that like played back then and was like, oh yeah, I I contributed to like this crazy stalemate on Cadia, and then to see like the retcon version that is so different, and Cadia gets chonked into pieces, the Eye of Terror splits open, like that's a huge change. I I'm I I wonder like like for you, Kiri, like what well, what well, like that's a that's a huge retcon. A good retcon, I, but you know, like I, that's got to be a massive like whoa. Okay, I was thinking that same thing, but I, I was thinking like you know, in, in a sense, that's that's kind of sucks that they did such a crazy event like that kind of thing, um, and then retconned it. But like, I'm in two minds about it because on one hand, if your crazy event is canon for a decade and a half, <laughs> like. <laughs> At what point is it like, you know, that that's that's long enough. Um, you know, like yeah. like a, a it, kid a kid was born when when Katie uh when Katie fell and then is a sophomore in high school by the time they changed it. Like, I don't know. Yeah. But at, at the other time, like I would love to ask someone who did participate in it and how ask them how they feel. Yeah, but I'm un- so curious to know how they feel about that. And it's like cuz when Katie, if that that's such a that's such a landmark occasion that, like Kiriath said, was so changing that, like, can you really be mad at that though? It, yeah, I, I, I would like like the fall of Katie right now identifies the entirety of forty yeah. k world. Like yeah. it is, yeah, it is literally the point of the Lion Son of the Forest book is the the yeah. galaxy is split in half. Like it's monumental. Yeah. Um. Did they do any like uh, Kira? Did you know if they did any like references to the original thing in the new Cadian books or something? Like, are there any players or winners that are like a random guardsmen or something? Do they do any of that stuff? From like, what homages? I can tell, like, not really. It, it's it's a lot of the foundational stuff is is similar or the same, but then it just ramps up in such an it like comparatively like such an insane way where. Instead of having, you know, chaos attack the surface and nothing really happens, but they are there and making life difficult. Instead, you've got, you know, like Saint Celestine dueling Abaddon is is massive and awesome. And that didn't happen first time round. So stuff like that just kind of it's weird because the thing that I remember suddenly became not relevant anymore because so much of it was totally different. But at the same time, it was kind of really cool at the same time because of just it didn't feel like that much changed. The actual campaign itself was really fun, and the store that I was going to and like the people I was playing against and stuff, it was it was a third party store. So one of the things they did was like results from Games Workshop stores had more weight than ones reported independently. Which I can I can kind of understand why they would do that. I mean, they had to weed out a fair few not legitimate sort of oh, sure. game reports. Yeah. yeah, but there was this kind of weird mix of okay, if they abide by the results of this, this is going to be massive. But if it goes too far in one direction, are they even going to abide by it? Because that'll kind of upset things a bit too much. 
Like, this kind of weird mix of, like, we can make things change unless they decide that they don't want things to change, in which case there's no point doing this. But then as things sort of get more organised and people get more into it, and then them kind of actively saying Chaos won. Like, they didn't say it was a complete victory. In fact, in that White Dwarf, the actual, like the line is victory for Chaos. Not a complete victory. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> okay, you did it. You didn't quite do all of it. But you did do it. Um, yeah, I, I'm i kind of in two minds because on the one hand, they could have just had a second part or like a 14th Black Crusade that just absolutely built on what the 13th achieved. But then again, 13th Black Crusade was already kind of embedded and already felt significant. And even just the name, the fact that, you know, 13 being the unlucky number, the 13th mm. Black Crusade... <clears throat> just sounds better than the 14th Black Crusade. It it kind of speaks of, like, ill omen and things going wrong and, you know, yeah. like, something unstoppable, weirdly. Um, so, yeah, kind of a mix of, oh, but that's not I, that's not what I remember at all. But then also going, oh, but it's, it's really kind of cool that he won. Like, he just yeah. outright won. He really messed everybody up, and that's... That's sort of what we were hoping for the first time round. You know, if you're playing on yeah. on the side of chaos and disorder, you wanted that to begin with. So, sort of seeing it happen, albeit quite a long time after, there's just there was a little bit of yeah, hell yeah, <laughs> he did it. He actively he, like he actually did it. That's great. Yeah, kind kind of hard to be mad at the outcome of what the retcon fall of Cadia was, right? Like, even if it is vastly different, it's like yeah, but. Like, it reminds me when we when we read the Arcs of Omen book about Angron. Angron mm-hmm. just won. He just, yeah, just big sl- chaos dub. Yeah, just yeah. slammed <laughs> apart this planet and, and turned yeah. everyone insane. And it's like nice, huge, ca- the big, well, not the biggest cap, but huge chaos dub. Yeah, absolutely massive chaos dub. Which it, which is is nice because it's a it's a rarity. Yeah, yeah. it's it's definitely. <laughs> I could stand to see it happen more, but I also know why it doesn't. It's like a 50-50 of, be kind of nice if something really, really horrific happened, but if you do that too often, the setting kind of breaks. Like, they can't... I don't know what they're going to do now, having split the galaxy in half, and, you know, all of this awful stuff happening, because if they escalate it too much, the existence of the Imperium becomes kind of nonsensical, whereas for a long time they've managed to balance it just right, where it's like... Everything is really bad, but nothing is quite uh, like apocalyptic bad yet. It's just on the brink. It's always on the brink. Yeah. Um. So I mean, what they what they did following the second version of the Thirteenth Black Crusade was such a huge shift that I I just really liked seeing that amount of change. There is though, there is something that the original had that the new version doesn't, which is a a genuine shame because the lost and the damned aren't a thing on the tabletop nah, no they they're used not. to be they used to be you could have your lost and the damned army and the you could have riders. a bunch of kit bashed <laughs> horrible mutants um alongside kind of normal <laughs> guardsmen who could have chaos spawn and lehman russes and they could feel defilers as well which was awesome, and there is a... Uh, oh, man, there is those a, are some old minis, dude. Oh, hell yeah. So, The Lost and the Damned was basically the... Represent- oh, yeah, no, The um, the Lost and the Damned from Codex Eye of Terror, uh, as Shai just pointed out, that you probably think it's the Firehawks, it's Traitor Guard. So, Codex Eye of Terror implemented the ability to feel Traitor Guard along with mutants, with um, Chaos Spawn with like a spa- like a chaos space marine champion leading the army so you weren't really fielding a bunch of chaos marines you were fielding normal dudes you would be fielding mutants and artillery and you know stolen tanks and stuff um wait so for the first what? time you actually got to just put traitor guard on the tabletop Wait, what were the Lost in the Dam? I thought they were the Ghost Rider dudes. Yeah, I, 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 I am, I'm, a, I am a little confused. They are. I, it's one of those things where they've taken a name and they've, they've reused it. Oh, god damn it! 
Because <laughs> I've heard Lost in the Dam refer to chaos cultists and shit before, but I thought uh, so. Okay. So this is literally just guard that have just gone trade oh, with the as a faction Legion like, of the yeah. damned we all oh, did it. got me all confused uh, uh, no well could that i mean that's fair they're both uh, uh, uh the damned and they both start with an l lost in the damned and legion of the damned it okay it's not yeah. the only thing that we were sharing an l here unfortunately <laughs> yeah, that, we were that, sharing the same brain cell <laughs> yeah <laughs> it happens oh uh dang it all right yeah yeah okay traitor guard yeah yeah but yeah, you, that's you know you can't you, you don't have unique rules for that now. If you want to play traitor guard, you play guard, and then or you do a lot of cultist conversion work with chaos, and you're like, yeah, the traitor guard for for a brief, wonderful, shining moment, you could have actual traitor guard, and you could kit bash them with orc parts to make mutants, <laughs> including in the first picture I put in there. If you look closely, <coughs> there's a dude who's scooting along on a single wheel coming out of his torso. Why? Whoa, what? <laughs> Whose idea is that? I don't know, but I do love it. <laughs> Wait, where is that on the picture? Where the, the guy scooting along in a single wheel? Where is that? <laughs> Unicycle so, Jones. <laughs> on the Lost and the, the Damned Bro. picture up there, you can see, you can literally see the fact that it's orc parts as well. Like big, muscly arms. They've got oh, the, yeah, the you're torso right. and shoulder parts. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. It was oh, awesome. man. This also completely useless bit of trivia. No one's going to care about but me. Um, the picture of the Defiler there, that's the first time that there was a picture of a Defiler model in a codex. And it's yes. still the same model. It's still the same model. Yeah, the, the Defiler was in the Chaos 3.5 codex, but it was only a drawing of it. There was no picture of it in any of the army shots because the kit wasn't ready at that point, even though the like the the stats were there and the rules were there. And so when Codex Eye of Terror came out, it was like, oh, oh, wow, they've actually got pictures of this thing that's kind of already been a thing, sort of. What's going on here? It was great. It's also why I ended up buying two of them almost immediately, because at the time, I'm willing to concede, they've not aged that well, <laughs> but at the time, it was pretty cool. Okay, okay, okay. That's, you know, that's, that's dope. Yeah, you know, I gotta be honest. I still hate the defiler with a burning passion. Um, <laughs> Why is that it's not aged? It's not aged well. <laughs> it is not. Uh, but the oh yikes! <laughs> that's not that bad. Ah, uh, that thing. That's not. I uh, like you make it sound like it's some abomination against. Well, I mean it's chaos, so of uh, it's yep. abomination against God. But like that's not a bad mini. Thing is, There's nothing it's not- wrong with that. It's not that bad until you compare it to all the other demon engines that they've made. At which point, it's like, oh, I wish well, the Defiler looked more like literally any of these. Like, a Defiler that looks more like a Mauler Fiend, with all like the muscle and stuff going okay, over it. Okay, fair. And, like, more kind of rounded armor and stuff, and yeah. like maybe a gun poking out of something that isn't just a box. Like, that that would undeniably be kind True. of cool. There- I'm not saying there aren't better, but like it's not like the Defiler's that bad either. Like it's fine. It's, you, not, you it's know, not the worst. You know what? I, ironically, I I imagine that look would look better as an Admech vehicle. Put up like like have well, like Dune Crawler legs and give it a bit more of like a steampunk aesthetic, and yeah. I think it would yeah. look it would look better as Admech. In a weird way, the Admech may, make it look more alien and strange than uh Yeah, than and Chaos add a does. bunch of mecha dendrites coming out from its back or something. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably Yeah, now right. you've said it, I kinda wanna see that. Yeah. See yeah, the uh, yeah. like I don't know, like the the new Chaos stuff as a demon engine goes, <laughs> it has to has to combine a bit more of that weird grotesqueness for me. Yeah, the sort know. of mutated flesh coming out of the steel. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah. that's just the way I, the way I look at it. That's also fair. that's fair. also in a uh, yeah, exactly, exactly, shy. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It looks like a do- a, do- a dune crawler. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It well, it does kind of yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's why I would prefer it. That's fair. I'll give just, you that. Just one. want a dune crawler. Don't want the I, 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 just, <laughs> I really like the dune crawlers. <laughs> just wants bigger, better dune crawlers or walkers or whatever they're called. You know, I I, I, I actually want to do a, an ask to our to our viewers. Uh, viewers, if any of you uh, were um, part of 
like like a comment section would be kind of nice, you know. Like if any of you were part of the 2003 Cadia Fall of Cadia like whole shtick, um, if they let you have internet in your old folks' home, please uh, <laughs> go ahead please. and oh, it hurts. <laughs> uh, please send us a um, a comment and tell you how how you feel about the new Cadia stuff, considering the old stuff. I'd love to. Uh, yeah, I'd love to hear it if your if your nurse will let you uh, type it out. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, that? <laughs> it was twenty years ago. It, oof. yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was literally twenty-one years ago. And it, like, it, think it, about, think about what Warhammer is is like in the age demographic. There are people who are in their mid forties that played that. They are yeah, in their, they are well. in their sixties. Wow, my comment might not it that much. I will. My comment might to not. Dust. Might not be not that be, off base. Yeah, actually, uh, true enough, I guess. Sheesh. Yeah, that's well. Okay, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe so, maybe so. I, uh, I can't, <laughs> I can't wait for my sins to catch up with me. <laughs> yep. Yep. Bricky is going to be hosting Adric from his nursing home in twenty years. Yeah. The nurses let me out. I can do today's episode. And then the my uh, person that I room with because I'm a, I'm in like a, a sniff will be like <laughs> you're in a shared sc- yeah yeah they'll be like screaming the entire time because that's what <laughs> yeah. happens in because they think facilities. you're talking factual and yeah oh well, no I mean, because they on- ju- no they just do that <laughs> <laughs> just in general just constantly <laughs> oh when, when I had to pick up patients from like the the sniffs and stuff it it, it was like a horror movie in there it's oh, awful yeah. it's awful. Yeah. Anyway, as someone who likes to scream, um, continue, Kirioth. Well, I was going to say, based on current trends, we can expect another uh, 13th Black Crusade to drop on, like, what, in thirty th- in 2031? So it's not that far to go until the third version, and then we can we can see how it goes from there. Yeah, we can we can comment on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> from our nursing home. That's, that's yeah. a good point. That's That'll be in seven years. No, oh, not long now. Don't Wait, twenty seventeen. One of us oh, dead, That's way 20, too soon. Twenty seventeen not... was seven years ago. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't love that. Oh man, isn't it crazy how the COVID lockdown was four years ago? It feels I... like it was centuries ago. It feels and like yesterday. it was like ten years. Uh, no, ago. it feels like yesterday for me. It, yeah, really? It's, for me, it, it feels like that was like a decade ago. It feels like both. <coughs> it really feels like both. I will sit there and be like, oh, that was during the pandemic. Oh, man. Can you believe the pandemic was last year? And then it's like, well, the, the lockdown bit was not last year. What are you talking about? But it, it feels like it was. But then at the same time, it felt like it went on for at least 10 years. Like the three months Maybe it's because to go out, like, I, I so forever. rarely go out that it's all just one big blur. <laughs> You know, That's like before COVID, it. I wasn't really going out and doing much. COVID happened. I was like, well, business as usual. And then, hey, I'm still here. So it all just kind of feels like one continuous timeline to me. <laughs> That's, I mean, that's the way to deal with it. Just don't go yeah. anywhere. You won't notice any difference. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Yeah, that, something like I, that. <laughs> that. That should be the, that's the message. That's the message for today's episode. Don't go anywhere. Simply yeah. submit your reports for your games that you've definitely played for a campaign yep. that ended a long time ago. It's fallen apart already. Praise the it's fallen apart. Hit the eject button. Someone press it. Let's go. Oh, oh, d- is the dementia kicking in? <laughs> yes. Oh, oh is crap. Kicking in? <laughs> hey, uh, hey, DK, will you make me a sandwich? 